Yeah, I know. It'll be done soon, but it's just not quite there. There's some pieces that aren't quite right. I'm trying... All right, yeah, you're right. It's been a while, and I did make a promise here, and... All right, you're right, yeah. Right. Should be out there. Having it done is better than having it perfect. Let's have a think on that. Hello and welcome to the 145 World Podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now, here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yay! And welcome everybody to today's episode. Today we are going to focus on a topic about getting stuck when you try to make everything perfect and how that can really hold you back. Uh, you know, avoiding that perf- perfection paralysis. And today we're just going to go deep into that and talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about the drawbacks of what that does to your your focus and the goal that you're trying to achieve, uh, the causes of why this happens. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a, a decent episode unless we address some solutions on this. So we'll head into those as well. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is let's just get the, the other things out of the way. It's the house cleaning. Um, thank you, everybody who is watching these and buying into everything and being part of this community. I really want to ask everybody, if you do watch this and you're enjoying this, please just give us a quick like so that we know that we're moving in the right direction. And if you would take the second just to subscribe, that really helps us and starts growing us in the right direction. We really appreciate it. I know you've heard it a million times, but it could really help. So that's why we just put it right at the beginning or right at the front. Uh, But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. And I just want to start with a quick quote. And it's just by... An author, one of the authors that is considered written a couple of the greatest novels that we know of, and that's Leo Leo Tolstoy. And the quote is, is if you look for perfection, you will never be content. And really that (laughs) encompasses everything. The more that you try to make things perfect, the longer you focus on making something absolutely the best it can be, you're never going to achieve that. And that really holds a lot of people back when they're talking about getting out and playing music in front of people, when they're out, when they're talking about recording music and letting people hear their sound and their ideas for the first time. These kind of hurdles really can trip up a lot of people in the beginning. And even halfway through a career, I mean, even veterans go through this exact, exact thing. I mean, I meet a lot of musicians and I, uh, there's a real quality about all of us that we have this streak of perfectionism in us and we really want things to be exactly right. And we really don't want to put it out in front of people in fear of just a number of things and it really can hold you back. So let's talk about the drawbacks of having this kind of paralysis, this reason to not do things or not get them out there. It's really comes down to uh, the number one thing is that having this mindset or, or letting this continually happen in your projects and in your your career, it, it's a super momentum killer. And the thing with that is that when you are really trying to get something going, you're trying to build a fan base, you're trying to convince yourself that you need to be out there and uh, playing shows and doing those kind of things, uh, the the first thing that's really going to hit you is that I'm not ready. I, I can't do this and I can't, I can't go out there and do what other people can do. Like, I have my favorite artists. I'm not up to their level. I know people around me playing shows and putting music out and what I'm doing is not up to their level. So maybe I'm just not ready. And that's not the truth. Every one of those people that you would reference in your mind that we think about that we use to you know, gauge ourselves against, they all went through exactly what you're going through at this exact moment and, and those exact times when you are hitting that wall or finding it the reasons not to do something. Um, so it, it can be a real momentum killer. 
especially when it's like, hey, I've done a couple good things or I've got this great idea, but it's not right. I have to polish this rock before I can show it off. And sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you can over polish it to the point that it never makes a difference. So, and, and the, the next thing you want to talk about is that with the momentum killer, there's also this part where there's a law of diminishing returns. And if we're using that same analogy where, you know, you're just polishing that rock and it's not quite ready, it's not quite shiny enough. There's a point if you're putting that elbow grease and that effort into that, you know, polishing that rock, it's only going to get so shiny before it starts losing layers and pulling things away and, and losing some of the, the things that you brought out with the first part of it are now gone because you've rubbed them off completely. Um, and the big part about that is that not only are you making it worse in some ways, you're hurting the overall end result, you're inserting a lot of time to something that's not going to give you a lot in return. And so that law of diminished returns is just talking about as you're investing all your time and your creativity and your energy into this thing, and it's going up and it's creating this, this one thing. And then at some point, the more time you put into it, the less you're going to get back from it. So it takes a while to learn how to balance that and to find that line, but it's, it's really important to have a, a mindset and an idea and a, and a concept of this to where you can go too far and to try to make, make things too perfect and then you're not getting any return. You're stopping, like I said, killing momentum with that. You're not getting uh, as, as much or from the people that would be interested in enjoying what you do. You know, it's just you lose, especially in today's reality, you can really fall out of the consciousness of everybody really fast if you're too busy trying to make things perfect. Um, and then another part of that going forward with that is that a, a, you can really stunt your growth going forward too. I mean, that's a huge drawback right there. To actually achieve getting better at writing songs, which is what we're trying to do here, and to get better at performing live, which we're also trying to do, those things take repetition and you can watch as many videos as you want and you can, you know, learn as much as you can and learn all the theory and the ideas and the crafts. But the most important thing you can do is just repetitions. It's just like shooting free throws in basketball or hitting a baseball or anything like that. It's just repetitions. You have to continually do it till it becomes, you know, a root memory and you just, it's so natural for you to do it. And that's how you start to, move forward. And if you're so busy holding yourself back, trying to make something perfect and giving yourself these excuses and these reasons, you know, you're not going to grow and you're not going to get better and you're not going to be, you know, putting out better things into the world or drawing more people into the, the shows and, and having them get as much from your live experience because you don't have that experience in your toolkit. And, and that's really going to hurt you. So that's really the drawbacks and where you want to start. That's why we need to avoid this and have a, like I said, got to have that in the back of your mind at all times. But I really want to talk about the causes of this. So as we kind of alluded to in that and just touching upon some things there, uh, the number one thing that we've all, we all start out with and the reason, no matter what age you are, especially the younger you are uh, and the more that you're in like a, a peer setting of school or work or something like that, we have this fear of embarrassment. And that is just so deep seated in being human that it's, it's really hard to overcome. And if you're not being honest with yourself, this one's going to just sneak up on you and punch you in the face and you'll never go anywhere. You'll never do anything. You'll never put anything on the world because you're just too afraid. The problem with this too is that any kind of thought like that where you're just, I'm just not ready or I don't want to make a fool of myself, you know, those kind of thoughts kind of feed into a, a ball of energy that just kind of builds up inside you and, and really feeds this negative energy that you're just never going to, to be good enough to do that. And it just, that's the wrong kind of momentum. You don't want that negative momentum to kind of get a head of steam going downhill. That's really hard to fight and really hard to pull yourself out of. Uh, there's lots of micro steps and we'll go about those in the future talking about the steps to get out and play live or put your music out for the first time. But at some point you've just got to be okay with making mistakes. 
that's the number one thing. You really just got to be okay. I, we all mess up. We all make fools of ourselves at some point. Own it. Be okay with it. Be okay with being human and making mistakes. Uh, but that's the number one cause easily of running into this. I, it has to be perfect. I have to be better. I have to play every note correctly or they're not going to like me or I'll be embarrassed. And you really got to get over that real quick because every show you go to, any professional, I don't care who they are, unless they're playing a backing track and not doing anything, they make mistakes. And it's just part of being a musician and doing live performance or even in the studio. Yes, you want to put out a perfect product, but no musician has ever come into my studio or any other studio and just boom, 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 we're done. That's my perfect performance and no editing, no nothing. It's done. It's perfect. It's just not a thing. And that's okay. You don't want to be that way because it means that either you're just godly and, and it's just unbelievably in your untainable skill, which isn't re a reality for anybody, or you just don't care and you have that mentality of they'll fix it. Fix it in the mix. Fix it in the – the the engineer will figure it out. So and that's not a mindset you want either. Everything takes work, which is true, but – that's okay. Making those mistakes is okay. Going into the studio and not having everything absolutely perfect is okay. You're going to make mistakes and just be okay with it. And I guarantee you, other musicians you work with are not going to make fun of you because they've done the same thing. They they do the same thing on a very regular basis. So you don't have to have this fear of being embarrassed. The next thing we should talk about as far as causes go um, is going to be a lack of vision or, or a lack of having goals. And it's really easy just to, when you don't have an end goal in sight and don't have a goal in mind, it's really easy to just keep telling yourself it's not ready because I don't know what ready is. You, if you don't have that end goal and know exactly what you want to put out and when you want to put it out or when you want to perform and, and when that's going to be, um, you're really going to run into just using I need to make it better or I don't know I don't know when done is done so I'm just going to keep trying to grow this thing and refine it and make it better and better and there's no end in sight and and having that lack of vision means you're stuck in the forest and you can't see anything at all you're just stuck staring at trees and you just don't know when you're going to be done you know you're doing right things and you feel like you're being productive but you're just moving in the wrong direction is what's happening here so you really don't want to have that lack of vision. Um, and if that's something that you're running into, please go back and watch the episode right before this or listen to the podcast right before this one. Uh, we address this exact thing of how to set those goals and how to give yourself that vision moving forward. And it, it honestly, that makes a huge step of getting rid of this uh, perfection paralysis and stopping that momentum from from stopping itself. So. Uh, another cause is one that I don't know if it's so common anymore, but it's, there's definitely a lot of us, and especially as artists and people who want to perform and be in the spotlight a little bit. Um, there's this thing where we always want to reinvent the wheel and that can fall under this perfection paralysis idea where you want, you, you're doing it, you're writing something. And it sounds too much like everybody else. It has to be different. So I'm going to have to rearrange this. I'm going to have to give it a different sound. I'm going to have to make it so original that no, everybody will know it. it's something brand new and something that's going to change the world. Well, that's fantastic. And I always would encourage anybody to follow wherever their creative whims might take them. But... 99% of the work you're going to do doesn't fall underneath that if you're being honest with yourself. Um, at this point, you should at least know what your sound is, who you are. You should have a direction of what you want to sound like already at this point. If you've done any of the work, you've listened to the episodes prior to this one, you know, those things should already be done and accomplished. And using like I need to be original or changing it up and doing things so different is an easy way to isolate yourself and just fizzle off into the back and, and become that, that thing in the background that nobody even notices. And uh, like I said, people are great at changing the world, but it's always increments. If you always, if you t look back, it's always like, Hey, this was the first person to do that. Well, 
anytime that you look back and you actually do your research and dig into that, they always were just changing something a little bit that they had learned before or seen before and made it unique in their own. It was, it's rarely the case of somebody, like I said, reinventing the wheel and everything's got to change at that moment. It's just, that becomes something that everybody hears it. It becomes somebody popular or the right person, the right time hits it and everybody starts following it. And then as you look back in the past, you kind of lose that perspective and, and all that stuff around there. So you got to be really careful about trying to reinvent the wheel and do something so original that now you're just pushing people away and isolating yourself. And, and that can really be part of perfection paralysis where you're just trying to continually change that that uh, mantra around you and, and change the the concepts around you to, to be something different. And you got to be careful of that. So like I said, we're just keeping a balance and keeping an open mind on that. Um, some ideas that I also was throwing around and I really want to hit upon this one too, is that uh, holding yourself back and, and this perfection paralysis thing um, can really be an extension of having a commitment issue. And what I mean by that is that sometimes we have a hard time just saying, this is what I want to do. This is the exact sound I want and move on to the next step. Or you're so afraid that if you make this one choice, you know, you can't go back and fix this. This is, this is unfixable. And I've made a decision that I, I can't change. And so you, you get really afraid of that. And so you're like, okay, I'm not ready to put everything together. I still need to work out exactly what tone I need. I need to work out exactly how the structure of the song works. Uh, we'll just use a couple examples here. Um, guitarists are absolutely the worst about this. Um, and especially those that play electric guitar can, can beat themselves into submission and then to a pulp, actually, like just trying to find the right tone for the song and for the feel and for the vibe. And what pedals am I going to use? How, how much saturation do I want this thing to have? How much tube is this distorted? Is this going to, like, it's endless. And, it's so easy to not make a decision in that moment or to just to put it off to the to a later date or a later time and it just never gets accomplished. Um, other ones like that are, especially for songwriters, would be lyrics are notorious for falling underneath this, this header here where it's really hard when you come down to, to that session and you're going to actually – You've already put the pen on paper. You've got a couple different ideas. They could go this way, could go that way. And then you keep putting it off. I'm not ready to record this song because I haven't committed to this. I don't know exactly how I want this story to come across or what perspective I'm writing my lyrics from. Uh, those kind of things can really just suffocate any momentum at all and anything going on in the future. Uh, and, the, and under the same idea, you've, and you've, if you've got those lyrics down, then it comes down to the melody and the vocal lines you're writing same concept you really have to commit to how that's going to sound uh what are the changes that i'm going to make to keep this interesting throughout the song those kind of things are really hard to commit to but there's ways around these these ideas but those are the kind of things that you really have to be mindful of that can can knock you out of contention for moving forward and growing your career and growing your art and craft so those are a lot of the causes. Let's talk about some of the solutions. How do we fix this? How do we change when we have this, this kind of mindset going on and you find yourself running in the circle and, and not getting where you need to get? Um, again, the first thing I, I want to suggest is this exact thing we went over last week, which, which was setting goals with dates and, um, if, like I said, if you haven't seen that, please go back. It's fantastic. There's some great concepts and ideas to work with, but it really helps so much if you have a goal set with a date. If you have to have it done by a certain time, you know, even if it's just a rough date, I want it out around this time, you start making decisions because instead of well, <laughs> getting stuck on that guitar tone like we were just talking about earlier, you okay, well, here, that's fine. I, I'm just going to move on. And I don't have time to deal with that. So, I mean, there's other things I got to address. This sounds good. This is good enough. 
perfect. Let's move on. I played it great. It, it sounds great enough. I, it's close enough that I can change it later or the engineer can deal with this at another point. Let's move on. Um, so, and then having that date just gives you an incentive and a reason to have things done and get them out there and just commit to something. Um, and the dates, of course, are a huge part of that. If you don't have that date, then it just becomes, I want to get this done, but whenever, it's fine. But when there's a date involved and an end in sight, it as that gets closer, we all love to procrastinate in some way or some form. That's what really sets it apart from, I better make some commitments so I can get to the end result here, as opposed to, it'll all come together. I've got, I've got an idea here, an idea there. I have the general rough sketch of what's going on. No, I've done boom, boom, boom. This is what I'm going to do. This is what the sound is. This is what I want to sound like, you know, and then you go forward from there. So that's goals with dates. Uh, the next part of the solutions that we want to talk about is going to be uh, systems and presets. And with systems and presets, we really want to go over how to avoid this in the first place. So the more that you've done this and the more that you start to pick out what works for you and what gets results for you, you can start to build systems and re like repetitive things around those uh, successes and those outcomes to make them continually happen going forward. Uh, systems we really want to talk about in this case are uh, building in like backups for things is a huge win when it comes. So what do I mean when I say backups? Um, building redundancies and other other ways to capture things as you go through the process, especially of songwriting and recording, can really build in safeguards so that you can commit at the time, move forward, do the other things that you have in front of you. And still, if something didn't work out right, or didn't sound the way you wanted, you still have a means to go back and fix that. Uh, for example, as we, again, we were talking about guitar tones and how sometimes committing to those kind of things really can trip some people up. There's a process that I use when I'm recording artists or myself where I will pick a tone pick the sound I want and get that either mic'd up or, you know, going in where I need to go. And then I will also run a DI box, which is a direct input box where I can run the sound from the guitar itself before it goes into either the amplifier or the pedal board or whatever I'm using. And so at that point I get the performance that I originally attended with the sound that I wanted, but then I also get a direct input of what I played going through that guitar and that way, if I have something that messes up or I overcommitted to something and it just, I didn't get to quite, uh, you know, sometimes you don't get all the sound that you wanted because you've over distorted it. It's been over compressed or the effect was too much. You have a backup option to go back and redo that. And the same thing, I use this for like talking about electric guitar, but the same thing when I have uh, recording country artists. I will always have usually two mics getting uh, their guitar and then one direct from their their instrument. That way, no matter what, if the room is too much or if, especially if you get like uh, clicks, a click track that will bleed into your microphones. If there's a very quiet part or a ring out at the end or something like that, that's having that DI is the perfect backup. And you don't have to worry about it. You just commit to what's happening. You know what's working. Just let it ring out. Doesn't matter. We've got a system in place. Um, but that's the kind of idea of just having those those backups ready to go. Uh, it, it, as far as vocals go, if we're talking about those, like sometimes I guess that's hard to correct. If you have multiple lines that you want to try out, record them both. Have them at all times. If it just isn't working out, you've already got it ready to go. So using your filing system in your computer or whatever you're using, to store these ideas and these recordings, just make sure that you're, if you have multiple ideas, cover the bases, get them all. Not, it doesn't take that much longer if everything's already set up and you've already done the work to get everything going. Just commit, do both versions and then move forward with the one that you think is the best. If it's not, you have that option. Like I said, this is the idea of using systems 
to get around that. And in the audio world, we do the same thing. This is why it's systems and presets. Uh, we can really get bogged down of trying to get the exact right sound we want through our plugins and through our audio gear. And that can eat up hours upon hours of time trying to get that exact right sound. Uh, took me too long, personally, just to figure out that using presets that I wanted so and just saving those could save you, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes in a session if you just commit to doing that. And then, and then, you know, heaven forbid you get to work with that same artist or you get your, it's your own work. Next time you come through with the same recordings, you pull up that preset, everything's already set, ready to go. And you might tweak it a little bit here and there because this is the new sound or I did it a little bit of a different way, but you already kind of understand this is the sound I'm going for. And those presets really don't have to hold you back to commit to a sound or an idea it's already done you don't have to worry about it you're moving forward there's no there's no paralysis you're not stopping no momentum was killed because you used presets so the the last one i want to talk about and number three on this one of solutions for this kind of of problem and the last thing we'll touch upon is involving others and it seems really simple but and you think it would kind of fall under the first thing we talked about, which was goals with uh, dates on them, but this is different. This is telling others around you what you're going to do, when you plan to have it done by, and, and how you want to do that. And the more you'll find, the more that you get people in your life that are on your side and rooting for you, they're going to look into like, hey, did you get that song done? Or how's the recordings going here? Are you going to get into a full album? Or how's your, are you putting a show together? When are you going to be live? I can't wait. I'll be the first in line. Involving people like that, be it just friends or family or significant others or uh, other musicians. Oh, other musicians are fantastic for this exact thing. Letting them know, hey, I'm working on my album right now. I've, I've got a studio set up and an engineer working with me and a producer. And I think we're going to have something out by about the end of the summer. And I guarantee you next time you run to that, that person or next time you work with them or whatever happens, they're going to ask you about that. Hey, how's it going? Is it coming together? Or it, And you start to feel that little pr- – it's not so much that it's you've built up this pressure behind you, but that's part of it. But the expectations are there, and you've put it out there, and you, you've said that I want to have this done by this time date or I have this kind of goal set in mind. And that the more that you kind of hear it out loud and, you know, that cycles back through your brain and you filter what you said and what they heard and what the expectations are, it's, you see, you seem to have a a better resolve to get that finished and done. And just involving people in your life really can make a huge difference. It's really easy just to be like, and I, (laughs) I am so guilty of this myself. I will show them when it's done. I will give them a copy when it's ready. I will let them hear it when it, when the time comes and they need to hear it. But that's not always the best process. Sometimes just telling them, hey, I, I'm going to have this song done. I feel like I'm getting close. Would you maybe want to be the first to listen to and give me, a, give me a small critique? And involving them in that process gives them something to come to you and ask about. And it gives you a sense of accountability to something somewhere and that could be a real game changer so those are just some of the ideas there those solutions and i hope they can help you and avoid this perfection paralysis remember it's okay to embarrass be embarrassed it's okay to make mistakes it's part of life and you will grow and you'll get better from it and the more things you do the more steps that you can take forward and continue doing those repetitions the better you're going to get from doing them so by all means don't let this kind of thing hold you back Get out there and grow and and put things out in the world and share them. So if at some point you run into an issue with that, please get a hold of us. Let us know that you're having an issue or, you know, if you don't think something's good enough, run it by. We're always available. We have an email on our our website and we always have things ready to go to help people out. So just know there's somebody in your corner to help you out at all all points so you don't have to run into things like this. So. Thank you guys again for listening today and watching. We really enjoy having you here and we love doing this. Again, if you haven't taken the time to give us a like, we'd really appreciate it if you did enjoy it. And if you would uh, join 
uh, our little subscription thing here and hit subscribe. We really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.